from tiny duckweed floating in ponds to the tallest trees, from ferns to roses. Yet all of these plants share many basic features. In this program, we'll investigate the structures and processes that all members of the plant kingdom have in common. We'll find out what makes them plants. Life depends upon energy, and all living organisms have a way to provide energy to carry out life functions. Most organisms, including most plants, release energy from food products by a process called cellular respiration. When we hear the word respiration, we usually think about the animal, and specifically human, process of breathing and using oxygen. Cellular respiration, as you can guess from its name, takes place within cells. In a series of processes within each cell, food molecules such as glucose combine with oxygen. This produces new molecules of carbon dioxide and water. The energy that was stored in the glucose is released by the reactions of cellular respiration. The energy is stored in a molecule called ATP. ATP is the most readily available energy source for activity. Cellular respiration takes place in both plants and animals and provides a constant supply of energy to carry out life functions. Where do plants get the food molecules that are used in cellular respiration? The glucose for cellular respiration in green plants is produced in a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis can only take place in the presence of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is what gives leaves their green color. Chlorophyll occurs in structures called chloroplasts within plant cells. The raw materials for photosynthesis are carbon dioxide, which a plant takes in mostly through its leaves, and water, which enters the plant mostly through its roots. During photosynthesis, the chloroplasts use the energy of sunlight to combine the water and carbon dioxide. This brings a carbon molecule from the carbon dioxide into the living system, enabling the plant to make new sugars, such as glucose. The reaction also releases oxygen. Because of their ability to photosynthesize, plants are described as autotrophic, which means that they produce their own food. Organisms that cannot produce their own food are called heterotrophic. Animals, for instance, are heterotrophs. They must eat and digest food to produce glucose for cellular respiration. Here's an experiment you can set up to observe the rate at which photosynthesis takes place in a plant. A plant called Elodia sits in the bottom of a beaker filled with water. An overturned funnel covers the Elodia and a test tube is placed over the stem of the funnel. During photosynthesis, oxygen is released. By counting the bubbles, you can observe the rate of photosynthesis. To demonstrate that the gas in the test tube is oxygen, hold a glowing splint over the open test tube. Only oxygen will cause the splint to burst into flame. Cellular respiration occurs in living cells all the time. Photosynthesis in green plants and other organisms produces glucose, which is used in cellular respiration. Living things take nutrients from their environment. For instance, animals take in nutrients by eating and digesting plants and other animals. Plants take in nutrients too. They get minerals from the soil or medium they are grown in. The minerals are dissolved in water and are drawn into a plant through its root system. Plants transport nutrients, oxygen, and water throughout their roots, stems, and leaves. Living things have the ability to grow and to repair damage. 
Plants are particularly good at repairing damage. When part of a plant is broken or cut off, the plant usually continues to grow, sending out a replacement part or healing the wound. The ability to grow and repair makes it possible, in some plants, to develop a whole new plant, roots, stem, and leaves, from a small cutting. Horticulturists use this technique to make sure that garden and crop plants maintain all the same characteristics from one generation to the next. Another characteristic of living organisms is their ability to respond to stimuli. For us, these responses are controlled by the nervous system, which sends messages to and from the brain about the stimuli. Plants also respond to stimuli. Light is an important stimulus for most plants. They grow towards it. Plants also respond to gravity. If a plant tips over, its roots will continue to grow downward. Most responses to stimuli in plants are slow. For instance, this time-lapse video shows a plant responding to the changing direction of light over the course of a day. A few plants, like this Venus flytrap, can respond almost instantly. It closes when an insect touches any two of the six trigger hairs inside an open trap or touches the same hair twice. All living things take in nutrients from their environment. Plants 